friends. It's so great to see you. Here I am again with another art lesson through video. Next week, however, we will have live art and I'll really look forward to seeing all of your faces. Today we're going to think about um, symmetry, which I know most of you probably maybe have some memories of. Some of you um, might for a second like kind of forget what it is and that's fine. And I'll refresh your memory if that's the case. We're going to read a book about symmetry and it's kind of a beautiful book that I found. And then we're going to do one more outside art project in line with this idea of symmetry. This is a little bit of a, it was a little bit of a series where I had you going outside and thinking about how our outside natural world lends itself so well to being artistic and creative. My hope is that it kind of gets you thinking when you're out there, um, thinking a little bit about how you can use what you find out there to make art and be creative right where you are. Don't forget when it's time to go outside to check in with people at home, your grown-ups at home, to make sure it's a good time to go out and that they're okay with it. And um, I'm going to read this book and then you'll have a little video where I show you how to do the project for the week. And then you can do it and please, please, please send me your artwork through that Google Classroom, the form that I put in Google Classroom. I love seeing your artwork, photos of your artwork come in. It's making my days. So keep it coming. Thank you so much. And don't forget, I'm posting all of your artwork in the Swift River School Art Gallery, which is on the website, the Art Room web website, that is found in Google Classroom in the Art category. You'll find the website. And if you go in there, you'll see my little pretend classroom and I have an easel at the forefront of the classroom. If you click on that, it takes you to the Swift River School Art Gallery and you can see all of your friends' art that they're making and you'll see yours if you sent it in. This book is called, I had the back, it was the back cover, Seeing Symmetry. For those of you who remember what symmetry is, are you seeing anything symmetrical here? Thinking the line of symmetry goes right down vertically like this, right? And then that means if we folded this in half, everything on this side is exactly the same as everything on this side. Butterfly wings have it. Triceratops had it. The word mom has it. When you know what to look for, it's easy to start. Are we seeing lines of symmetry here? Seeing symmetry. You might see symmetry in the yard, on a plate, flying by, in the sky, hiding out, and in plain sight. So what is it? If you can fold a shape exactly in half, see the line right there? It has symmetry. If each half is a mirror image of the other half, the whole shape is symmetrical. Each half is flipped over like a reflection. And there it is, see how this swan is on the water, but its reflection is in the water. So this shape, if you just think about that as a shape, right? It's a perfectly symmetrical, symmetrical shape, and actually it reminds me of a flower. The line in the middle is the line of symmetry. Shapes such of the, as these have line symmetry. Are there other names for this kind of symmetry? We'll have to see, so we'll find out later on. If you could fold a sea turtle from nose to tail, the two sides would match 
flipper to flipper. It's impossible to fold a real sea turtle, but one side of its body is the mirror image of the other. Nature is rarely exact. One flipper may be slightly larger than the other, for example. So what they're saying is if you find a flower that's or a leaf that's symmetrical and you fold it over, there's a chance that it might be a little bit off because it's not always exact, but we can still call it symmetrical. Animals as different as scallops, beetles, sawfish, look at that, it's totally symmetrical. Toads, I find these, I mean, I just find this so fascinating, look at that. Oh, nature is just amazing. Lizards, penguins, and whales have bodies with symmetry. Check your face in the mirror and you'll see a line of symmetry. We've talked about this before when we've done self-portraits and stuff, right? Right down the middle of your nose. What about your hands? One hand by itself does not have symmetry. Like if you folded your hand in half, right? This side is not the same as this side. However, your two hands are mirror images of each other. So then it becomes sym symmetrical, right? And your body has symmetry too. And so does much of the clothing that fits on your body. We're talking about how letters have symmetry. So there's a line of symmetry, a horizontal line of symmetry that goes across. You remember vertical, horizontal, right? I know you probably are like, oh, I remember that, Emily, but it's still, I feel like it's been a long time since we've been together. So don't mind me if I just give some refreshers. And words have symmetry. Mom which they told us about. Cod, it's symmetry this way, horizontal symmetry, right? Right through the middle this way. Cookie, same thing. It's not symmetrical this way, like mom has vertical symmetry. Cookie has horizontal symmetry. And they're showing this, that there's rotational symmetry. You can think about how if things spin, you can see how many, see how the flower petals match up as the flower turns around. So you go, this is the top, and then it turns this way and it's matched, and then it turns again and it's matched again. So every time it turns, there's symmetry and it creates this rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry is found in nature and in things people make. So here we see more rotational symmetry, symmetry rather, where if you turn it, right, you see that each click of the turn, is, there's a symmetrical, it would line up symmetrically. I think rotational Symmetry is gorgeous. I think it's beautiful. And actually, um, fifth and sixth grade, when we've made mandalas, that has they have rotational symmetry. I just think they're really special and beautiful. Animals in motion need symmetry to crawl, swim, hop, fly. So they use both legs, both sides of their bodies to move. So it actually serves a purpose, symmetry. Same with like airplanes and helicopters and bicycles, right? We need both. Here are some examples of symmetry in artwork. Thing where you might not notice it unless you have your mind sort of tuned into symmetry and then all of a sudden it's like oh symmetrical symmetrical and you start to notice it everywhere right and in art especially there's something really peaceful 
and centering and calming about symmetry, at least for me. I know it's not true for everyone. Everyone has a different, you know, um, experience with when they ex um, see art, different pieces of artwork, and that's what makes art so unique and special. It's not just the artist making it, it's how the person who's seeing it is feeling when they take it in. For me, symmetry creates a sense of peace. They're saying that um, in, oftentimes in lots of holiday symbols, we see symmetry. Although I have to say my jack-o'-lanterns are never symmetrical. And I don't mean that just because like when I cut, they're going to be a little off. It's because like we don't create sym symmetrical jack-o'-lanterns. Like usually there's like one fang on one side and a scar on the other and something else. Like it's just intentionally usually not symmetrical, but oftentimes they are, right? This one is, has vertical symmetry. The architecture is often, often has symmetry. And this building right here is the Taj Mahal. And you'll see it has this line of vertical symmetry. Just a beautiful example of symmetry in art. The Taj Mahal is in India. And they're saying now you'll spot symmetry. Like, I know you already know what symmetry is, but it kind of is the, it's the kind of thing, it's like a basic concept, but it also takes some kind of sophisticated thinking to make art that's, you know, intricate and symmetrical. Like, you know, from when we've done the mandalas or even the dream catchers and all that stuff. Um, for those of you who have done those projects with me, it's, it's one of those things like, it's not kind of like an age related thing. It's like it grows with you and it can get more complicated as you, you know, as, as complicated as you want to make it. So now when you're looking out in the world, you might see tiles in a different way and all sorts of things. Okay. Well. The project for today is to go outside. This is like the last one of our um, outdoor nature theme projects. Next week I'll be live with you and we're going to focus more on materials that we have at the table inside. But again, this is the like go outside. Definitely ask someone at home if it's okay to do so and collect more natural materials. But this time collect like a lot of one kind and a lot of another kind. So you have a bunch of them because you're gonna need to make something symmetrical, which means you need one for one side and then another for the other and possibly if you're doing rotational, lots of them around in the circle. And exactly what I was just saying, I'm gonna want you to find a smooth surface and create some kind of symmetrical art using natural materials outside. Please, if you think of it, take a photograph upload it to the Google form so I can see it. I can't, I know I've like said it a bunch of times. I love seeing your artwork come to me. It makes me smile so much, so big, so wide. And, um, and I'm uploading them onto the Swift River School Gallery, like I was saying. So you can um, see all of your friends, your, your friends who have shared art. You can see their work in the gallery. You can see your own work in the gallery. So anyway, I think it would be a great thing. It would make me happy. It might make you happy. If you don't feel up to it though, that's fine. If you don't wanna um, share your work in the gallery, you can just say, please don't share. And that's also okay. You'll see the video coming up next. I'll show some examples of symmetrical art with nature. You'll see my daughter made one. She says it's a butterfly. So check it out. Email me with any questions, and I can't wait to see you live next week. Have a creative week. Bye, everyone.